Okay, welcome to part two of this tutorial series. In this video, we are basically going to carry on from where we left off in the previous part, uh, which was here, the code looking at in a minute. Um, I said I'd explain this on duplicate key update a little bit more, uh, so I'll do that now. What on duplicate key update does is um, when you insert a new row, if the like row you're trying to insert is not allowed by the unique keys or primary keys indexes, sorry, I should say indexes really, um, then it will do this duplicate key update, this update query here. Um, not quite the same as a regular update query. You don't need to specify the table because that's here. You don't need to say set. Um, I'm not sure why. Maybe you can. Um, you also don't need to specify a where clause because um, this the, it knows the row that has been violated. That's, mm, because it has the unique, uh, the keys have to be unique. It knows which row um, is already there, preventing it being inserted. So it just updates that. So what we're doing there is setting requests equal to the current value of request plus one, which are basically increment requests. The last thing we need to do in this function is actually perform the query. So MySQL query SQL, like so. So let's move on to the other function that's going to be in this file. Uh, and again, to prevent SQL injection, uh, we are going to escape this, like so. And then we are going to uh, try to get the number of requests using a very simple query. So we're going to use it directly uh, in the MySQL query function. I'm just going to call the result total. So it's the total number of requests of requests, and the query is going to be select requests from API log where IP equals that function again, inet atom, A-T-O-N, string, string is going to be the IP address, for IP, nope, IP, and where the date is equal to. Now, when we inserted into the date, uh, date, the date column, which had a type of date, um, we could just use the now function, but because this, um, well, it would trim off the time automatically, but here it sort of won't. It'll compare the full string that now returns to the date and not get any rows. So what we need to do is wrap this now function in the date function, which will just uh, return the date portion uh, of the time that you give it, which is now, which is the current time. So that's what we're doing there. And then we simply need to. Uh, oh, actually, no. So this is quite an important part. Um, if the uh, if this is the first request that the user has made, there. Um, to the API that is, there won't be any um, rows, so this will return zero rows. And then if we, if we try and record, if we try and call MySQL result on this, um, we'll get PHP errors all over the place, which will look messy. So what we want to do is check the number of rows against one, because it can only ever return one row. If it does return one row, we're going to call the MySQL result and return the result of the query. If it doesn't, we're going to return zero because if they haven't inserted anything yet, that means zero requests. So we're going to return using the ternary operator the result uh, MySQL num rows total, and if that is equal to whoops one, uh, we are going to um, return MySQL result of total and the zeroth column. And if it's not, if it's equal to zero, that pretty much means we're just going to return zero, like so. Not zero, one, just zero. Okay, so that is actually it for the API backend file. Uh, so let's move on to the init file. This is, oops, this is the init file for the shortening site. So it's in the shortening site folder. Uh, in the core folder, so it's this file that we're working with. So let's just open that file up. We have it here. This is the code we finished with at the end of the previous tutorial. Um, so all we need to do is now include the API backend. So we're going to copy this include to a new line, and we are going to change shortener to API, and that's that done. So now if we um, go to our page and just reload it, you see we do get no errors, that means that the API file has been included, 
and that it doesn't contain any syntax errors, uh, which is good for us. So because that's the only, this is the only modification we're making to this init file, so I'm just going to close this file now because we're not going to be working with it anymore, at least not for the uh, not for this tutorial series. I might use this code again for something else. Uh, at the moment we can't test this, so we need to build up our API in a way that we can test it with. So we're going to create the API page next, which is this file here. Uh, it's basically a page, except it won't contain any HTML, because it's a page that is only used by PHP and not browsers. I say PHP, it can be any language. Anyway, I'll explain that as we progress. Okay, so what we want to do in this file first is include the backend file. Uh, and that backend file is in the core folder and it's called init.inc.php. I mean init file, initialization file, not backend file. Okay, so our API here is going to be working with post data. So whatever language you're using will send post data to this uh, your full URL. So you'll send post data to the, no you send post data to this full URL. Um, as I mentioned before, we're also going to be creating a PHP interface to make this a little bit simpler. So our interface is going to handle the post data sending to this URL. And it'll just return like a nice array and it'll take a single string value. Um, sorry, those two functions will return nice arrays. So, um, because we're working with post data, the way it's going to work is we are going to either send the lookup value. So say if you had a form, it'd be similar to submitting okay actually let's create a form because that'll be a nice way to test this so let's just create a form with the action equal to the current URL which is empty string and the method of post uh, let's just give it two inputs let's give it a type text name I'll decide in a minute um, and a submit button type equals submit value equals test like so. So now we have a simple form that we can use. Uh, obviously the HTML is horribly invalid but I'm not going to worry about that because we are going to be leaving it here just for very simple testing. So the way this is going to work is we're going to send a different po a different um, some different post data uh, depending on like what you want to do with the API basically. So say if you wanted to shorten the URL, you would send the shorten variable. So if you were sh uh, if we were sending if if you want to shorten the URL with the API, we would have sort of effectively name equals shorten. Um, obviously we wouldn't have a real HTML form. This would be all done via sort of code, backend PHP code. Uh, and we would just be calling a PHP function. PHP function, sorry. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's that. We won't, there won't be any user input directly to this file. So, what we want to do is, okay, um, sorry, I got distracted by something. Anyway, we want to check if the um, we want to check if what are we checking. We want to check if the post uh, lookup variable is the one we're using. Say, if, okay. Two things this API is going to do is uh, look up a key and return its full URL, uh, and the other thing is shorten URL and return its key. So a fallback thing will be to output some data, sort of saying, "Look, this is what you can do with it." So it's going to be an array, but you know, it'll like contain the two keys and descriptions of what you can do with that key. Anyway, let's move on. So the first thing we need to do is check if the user is trying to look up a key. So let's just check if post lookup is set. If it is, we're going to do the lookup stuff. Else, we're going to check if the um, shorten key is set. Oh, can't type post shorten, like so. And if that is, we're going to do the code here to shorten a URL. Uh, otherwise, we're going to fall back to just outputting sort of some help information on the API, uh, which I'm going to do now. And in the next few parts, I'll do the above two blocks. So this help information is going to be an array. I'm going to encode it using JSON, 
what JSON is is a sort of serialization format. What it will do is take an array or object and it will um, it, what will it do? It will it will it will it will it will output it in a sort of string format that you can like get the array back from by unserializing it. Uh, it's similar to two PHP functions called serialize and unserialize. However, JSON is a sort of accepted, widely used, stand widely used standard. So there is no need to sort of create your own code. I mean, there are a lot of libraries around that have code in lots of languages that will sort of decode JSON strings. So you'll be able to. It's sort of a compatibility. If it's a standard. You'll be able to use it from any language. Whereas serialize is a PHP specific thing, so it'd be quite difficult to use this API. We could also use XML data, but PHP doesn't have a nice native function uh, compared to the JSON function. Also, it will be a lot longer, so you use more traffic. Anyway, uh, what we are going to do is um, output a JSON encoded string, uh, and luckily for us, PHP has a JSON encode function. So I'm going to echo the result of that now, and that's the function. And it takes an array. It could take a few more parameters that set the options, but we're going to use these as the defaults because that's sort of the accepted standard. So we're going to just bring that down two lines, and this array is going to be the, sh the sort of the two key names that we have have here. Uh, the first one is lookup, uh, and that is going to give a uh, sort of a description of what you can do using that, and it adds the given URL to the system except I can't type system the system and the other thing we can do with this API is look up no I'm just done look up the other thing we can do with this API is shorten and what that does is I shouldn't be there that should is it uh, no <laughs> it does that see the notes I have for these videos I've got them the other way around anyway uh, look up look up will um, get the full URL for the given key. There we go. Uh, and what this will do, if I just reload our API page, is output this string. So you can sort of see what's going on here. Uh, this full thing is our array, denoted by these curly brackets. And sort of each of these comma separated things is a key in the an element in the array, sorry. And then for each of those, like this is an element, for each of those elements um, this first thing in quotes is the key, and this uh, colon denotes that the next thing in quotes is the value. This technically isn't an array in JSON, it's an object, um, but this is just standard for um, if you have like string keys. If you have numeric keys starting from zero, you will get sort of square brackets, and I'll demonstrate that later on when we get to error checking. Okay, so I think we're going to leave this here. Uh, actually no, we can do lookup because it's fairly short. Um, so what happens when the user sends lookup information is they will actually send the value of the key they want to look up in this post lookup variable. So we literally just need to use the JSON encode function again. I'm going to give it another array. Um, and that will contain the URL that they are trying to get. Uh, and that's going to be the result of the get URL function which we created in the URL shortening tutorial. I'm going to pass it the key that they've supplied, which is post lookup. So you can see at the moment this is basically like programming for like a HTML form submission, which is literally what you're doing because you're all that sends post data. We're going to be sending post data as well. Okay, so the other thing is the key, and that's just going to be the thing they entered. So we're sending back what they gave us with no processing at all. So now if I go back to our page, uh, let's just change this to lookup. If I go back to our page, and hit reload and look up say key one and hit test you see we get this different JSON string which is another array containing uh, two elements the first element is URL pointing to the full URL and the second one is the key pointing to the key we provided in the form when I click test um, oh this escaping is done automatically we didn't do this uh, and when you decode this string it'll be removed because Basically, four slashes are control characters. It's like MySQL uh, real escape string, except that PHP does it all for us and handles everything to do with creating a valid JSON string. Okay, so thanks for watching, and join me in the next part where we'll sort of 
finish this page off.